Hi everyone and welcome to disease number 3 of 6 diseases in chapter 10, infectious diseases. This video is about AIDS. So here we go. HIV AIDS. Now it is caused by human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. Now it's not just a virus, it is a RNA virus or what we call a retrovirus. It contains single-stranded RNA as genetic material. You know how in general virus can have RNA or DNA. Now this one has RNA and it's single-stranded. Now that's the most inside of the virus. Outside the RNA, there is the protein coat. And then outside of that, there is a lipid bilayer or a viral envelope. Protein coat or capsid is made up of capsomeres. Okay, these are specific proteins. Whereas the viral envelope is made up of lipid bilayer and proteins that are derived from hosts, and it has many viral glycoproteins on the outer envelope. You can see here it's called GP41, GP120. GP just means glycoproteins, just not the numbers, you don't need to know it. Although you can go online and Google and find out their actual functions. <clears throat> Anyways, other than these three main components, there are actually two more enzymes that are needed for the function of HIV. Number one is this very important enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Now, reverse transcriptase is everything reverse of transcription. So transcription, in transcription, DNA is converted or copied to RNA, but in reverse transcriptase, RNA is used as the template to produce DNA. So it's converting RNA into DNA. And number two, the second enzyme is protease, which cleaves or processes new viral proteins. So two enzymes here. So let's talk about its life cycle and how the virus works. Now, the RNA and the, sorry, when the HIV or the virus fuses with the cell, what happens is the viral RNA and reverse transcriptase enter. You can see here, this is what happens at number one. Now, after that, the reverse transcriptase would convert this RNA into DNA from a single stranded RNA. Now, it becomes a double-stranded DNA here. Then the viral DNA, which is converted now, is incorporated into the host DNA, which is in the nucleus. So a host cell, in this case, a T helper lymphocyte, will not be able to function normally, but instead um, the cell's machinery is used to express viral proteins through transcription and translation, of course. So the virus actually uses the cell's resources and its proteins and its enzymes to make its own more of itself, basically. So viral proteins are assembled into many new viruses. And that, that is how um, the HIV makes more of itself and makes more copies of itself. Now, um, that is the life cycle inside a human. How does it transmit from one human to the other? Well, this is through direct exchange of body fluids. It cannot survive outside the human body, so it can only be through direct exchange. It means there must be some sort of contact, very close contact. <clears throat> so they, there are three main ways. Number one is through sexual intercourse, semen or vaginal fluids. Number two is through blood transmission via infected blood transfusion or contaminated strangers. Uh, and mother to baby transmission is possible as well. If the mom is HIV positive, then um, the mom can pass the virus across the placenta when she's pregnant or when the baby is born. The virus can spread through breast milk. So, looking at these three things, uh, the the high risk groups would be people who have multiple sex partners, okay, people who 
practice anal intercourse, and this is because there's less lubrication in the rectum, so it easily damaged, and then virus can pass from semen directly into blood, and that increases the chances of HIV spreading. Other than that, of course, drug users are also um, high risk groups, especially if they use stringers and share stringers. So that's dangerous. Now we know how it can spread, this is how it cannot spread. It cannot spread through kissing, it cannot spread through hugging, sharing food, insect bites, bathing, toilet seats, sneezes and coughs, and sweating. So do not, um, I guess, if you meet someone HIV positive one day, do not discriminate them, just stay away from their blood, essentially. Okay, so let's talk about the symptoms and effects of HIV or AIDS. Now, actually, HIV is a slow infection and virus can stay dormant for years. It is possible that the virus incorporates the DNA into the whole cell and do not replicate for a while. We don't know why and when and how it's controlled, but it can do that. It can stay dormant. Now, other than staying dormant, it also can survive in the human body and change its surface proteins to hide from the immune system. So your immune system cannot detect it, cannot destroy it, and therefore it stays in the person for long periods of time. But when the virus is activated, it can infect cells of the immune system called T helper cells, helper T cells, or T helper lymphocytes. They're basically the same T and helper can be reversed. Um, they are lymphocytes, they are cells of the immune system. And of course, if HIV infects those cells, this destroys the helper T cell and causes their numbers to increase. And as a result, the immune system is weakened and the body is unable to defend itself against infection over time. At first, if there's a HIV infection, it could be symptomless for many years or just have minor flu-like symptoms. But if the immune cells continue to decrease in number, opportunistic infections can occur as a result of a compromised immune system. Now, a collection of these opportunistic diseases associated with HIV is called AIDS. Okay, so HIV has very mild symptoms but can develop into AIDS. Now, what are some of the opportunistic infections that can occur when a person has AIDS? There can be oral trash, which is that this inflammation and infection of the mouth here, many, many different ulcers, very painful. Pneumonia, infection of the lungs, cancers like Kaposki sarcoma. Cancers are also, um, if you remember, can also be combated by the immune system. But when the immune system is weak, cancers like Kaposki sarcoma, which are these spots, tumors on the surface of the skin, can develop. Neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, I forgot the D there. Tuberculosis, malaria, can also develop. And then that, there are generic things like malnutrition, weight loss, diarrhea, and fever, and spreading. Now, HIV does not always progress to AIDS. You can have HIV, but you can, if you keep it under control, it may not develop into AIDS. Now, how do you do that? Now, you can't treat AIDS, you can't treat HIV and get rid of the virus of your body forever, but you can keep it down. Drug therapy can slow down the onset of AIDS, and this is an example of a famous drug, it's called Zidobudin. And Zidobudin basically is very similar to thymine, and what it does is is that it binds to the enzyme reverse transcriptase and inhibits it. So the RNA cannot be converted to DNA and the viral DNA cannot be incorporated into the host nucleus. Okay, So this disrupts the life cycle of the virus and slow down AIDS. Now, of course, drugs can target viral protease and inhibit it as well. So other drugs, not zitovudin, um, can target viral proteins, which is the other enzyme, and inhibit it so that the, um, the viral proteins cannot be processed or cleaved in order to form new viruses. So that's drug therapy. However, there are problems because drugs are expensive and have a variety 
of side effects. So not everyone can afford the drugs, and even if you have the drugs, you might experience side effects. Now, because um, sometimes AIDS is hard to combat, sometimes the doctors do advise combination therapy, taking multiple drugs at the same time to slow down the onset of AIDS even more, and there must be a strict pattern and timing of medication. If not, it won't work. And in, in addition to that, patients may develop strains of HIV that are resistant to drugs, so these drugs may not work anymore. So you must follow a change. And then you must finish medication and must take it on time. <laughs> so, as they say, prevention is always better than cure. How do you prevent that? Now, number one, there is no vaccine. So you cannot have a vaccine and then be safe. You do need to use a certain kind of barrier when it comes to um, having sex, a condom, femidoms, or dental dams. If you don't know what they are, you can Google them with care, with the safety filter on, okay? Now, HIV testing can be promoted as well in high-risk groups. For example, male homosexuals, prostitutes, injecting drugs users, and sex partners, okay? Um, we can use contact tracing. And contact tracing is basically, um, it should be familiar to you, you just trace whoever the person has contact with or put at a risk of infection and provide the person a test as well. So, for example, if a person gets caught, tested for positive for HIV, we will ask the person to contact whoever he had sex with before and then um, ask them to test it as well, just in case they got it as well. So that they won't simply go and have sex with other people and spread the HIV. Okay. This is also something that's practiced with COVID-19, isn't it? So we do trace people who have COVID-19 and whoever that is in contact with the person should go and check and get quarantined. Same idea, contact tracing. Now, of course, we have to discourage needle sharing, screen the donated blood, and make sure that HIV AIDS are not um, spread through their blood. Now, a very famous current uh, preventive measure, especially in the US, is to take PrEP, P-R-E-P which is a prophylactic drug or a preventive drug. And this is not in syllabus, but this is something that is in the market right now. There are other ways to prevent things. Um, we can control mother-to-child transmission using drugs as well. Uh, this is sort of uh, breastfeeding is sort of a controversial thing, not because of the common thing, but it, it depends on the country. The suggestions are different. So here we go. So how do we control mother-to-child transmission? If you are HIV positive and you are from a high-income country, a developed country, then you should avoid breastfeeding just in case your child gets it. But if you are a low or middle-income country, a developing country, then you advise to breastfeed because breastfeed does contain um, some antibodies as well to provide protection against, um, against other diseases. And this far outweigh the risk of transmitting HIV. Now, what do you write in the exam? You write the first one, you write the second one if necessary. So we are here at other problems of HIV and AIDS. Now, it's not so easy to curb it. It is a worldwide pandemic. Now, especially in Africa, where the number of AIDS is really high, it's very difficult to reach people for widespread testing in very rural areas. They're not very well developed there. Um, there are many symptoms carriers as well, so many people may have it, but are not aware yet. And uh, if you test positive already, how do you control it if you do not have money? So, yeah, that is a problem. Now, as I said, it is a pandemic. It is... Um, spreading throughout the world. It is, has especially high numbers in Africa. Um, and that's because it's originated there. And, and as we said just now, it's very hard to test everyone. And they are also poor and cannot afford um, the drugs. As well as education. There's not enough education about HIV and what it is and how to prevent it. There. So that's it. That is HIV. Any questions? Let me know through um, the chat, even if it's separate, you can feel free to message me your questions. I'll see you next video. Bye!